Greetings everyone, my name is Adderville, and I welcome you all to my live let's play of Mega Man Dr. Wise Return, an 8-bit Mega Man Classic fan game developed by Atomic Fire. So without further ado, let's begin. Here's our selection of 8 RMs. Pyro Man, Blade Man, Earth Man, Atomic Man, Storm Man, Energy Man, Frost Man, and Spike Man. I'll start off by going after Earth Man. You may select which RM to go after next. So we can jump, shoot, slide, and fire charge shots. Although in this game, the charge shot is a bit different. Not so much the full charge shot, but the mid charge shot, which will become apparent during boss battles. And this game does not have controller support, so I'm playing this using a keyboard. And it's running at only 30 FPS too. And as you may notice, sliding is a bit awkward. Specifically if you don't hold down the combination. Physics do feel different. And it could be worse. The physics at least work for this game. I'm not sure when this game came out, actually. That was a surprisingly easy to defeat Metal Dispenser there. Oh, and before I forget, we start off with the Mega Buster and the Mega Jump, the latter of which I'll showcase soon enough. As in, during the next Roadmaster stage. So that was Earthman's level. Very straightforward, a good starting stage for this game. As you may have noticed, half charge shots now deal 2 damage to bosses. Whereas in most mainline Mega Man Classic games, the half charge shots only deal 1 damage. And because it takes slightly longer to do full charge shots, half charge shots are a viable weapon in this game. And by defeating him, we get the Sonic Blast, which can be used to destroy rocks and other barriers. Let's go after Pyro Man next. Hmm. 
Most enemies are about the same as they were originally, but there have been some edits. For example, that Metar enemy. And I do like the parallax scrolling going on in the background. And you're right, Mr. Lee. Most of these RMs are essentially recovered versions of previous Roadmasters, or recombinations of several. Also, it appears enemies don't really deal that much damage to me. Compared with the previous stage though, this is much better. We actually have unique enemies, and an actual stage gimmick. Here's the Mega Jump in action. And here's a Sonic Blast. Yeah, I could have had better art. Right now, it's passable. The devs may do with the art that's already present in Mega Man, but it's pleasantly put together. I agree, Jaden. I found Rock and Roll to be, at best, decent. It's not a bad game. It has its problems, sure, but not enough to make it like a bad fan game. See, now we're going somewhere with these gimmicks. I know this gimmick is pretty simple, but it works. In fact, I want to showcase something else with the Mega Jump. You can control how high you jump as well. So it's similar to the Mega Man 5 Rush Coil in that regard. Cathode Ray Bits, I found to be inferior to Rock and Roll. It has several balancing issues and outright bugs. Hello, Flame Slash Heat Man. And now you can see why the half charge shots work better against bosses.
I recall it's Sparkman, but his arms are different. in contrast with Earthman is much tougher. But his stage is a lot better, having an actual gimmick. And by defeating him we get the heat wave. Blade Man wins. I will give credit to the developer, even though these sprites have been reused and edited, at the very least, these aren't the same RMs from previous Mega Man Classic games. They are their own robots. Sure, go ahead, I will me. Oh, by the way, here's the heat wave. Pretty fun to use weapon, fairly powerful. One shot's most weak to medium strength enemies. Speaking of sudden enemies... I already did a full let's play of that game, I will me. Currently, my two favorite Mega Man ROM hacks are 4 Voyage and 4 Minus Infinity. Five Double Jumper was pretty fun as well. Two No Constancy, although a bit controversial in certain segments of the fandom, I find it to be one of the best Mega Man 2 ROM hacks out there. Boy 6 is fun. I didn't think they would add a full co-op building mode to the game though. Again, not too much of a challenge. 
When I first played this game, I didn't expect him to be the shield user. By defeating him, we get the blade barrier. Spike Man it is. Controversial in the sense that it's a Mega Man 2 ROM hack that doesn't exactly resolve the issues the original Mega Man 2 had. There is a certain odd part of the community that doesn't like any ROM hack for Mega Man 2. Uh, Coldens without their hats. Well, but apparently opening the menu resets my invulnerability frames. That's why I said on yesterday's morning stream, don't just listen to one LP -er or reviewer's opinions, listen to multiple when forming your own. Mega Man 5 pulled off a similar trick in Napalm Man's stage. Oh, and here's the Blade Barrier. Sadly, not that useful. I guess destroyed too quickly. We'll probably get X9 at the end of next year, or the year after that, depending on how well Dive performs. I will credit the game for having some nice graphics, though. That's what I was worried about. Knockback. Oh yeah, if you open and close the menu, you fall off ladders. Ah, uh, the joys of playing some of the earlier Mega Man Classic fan games. I get the feeling that this fan game was either made in the early 2010s or even before that. Also, another stage that actually has a gimmick and uses it.
bit on the tougher side, but not by much. I beat Rock and Roll on stream, Ironhide. And by defeating him, I get the spike shot. Like a weaker version of the Heat Wave. Frostman it is. Strange that this game reused the name Frostman, even though he's an RM in Mega Man 8. I'll use this as my bus replacement for the game. What? I wasn't even touching the spike there. Not sure why I died earlier there. I guess shooting increases your hitbox size. I wouldn't put it past this game to have that. Thankfully that wasn't too bad, thanks to this game's altered physics. Of course, it pushed me back. It's only when the seal's eyes are open when I can damage it. That's what makes them like the Sniper Joes of this game. Of course, I can get pulled down even through invulnerability frames. This is my least favorite part of the stage, by the way. And that actually acts like a bottomless pit, it's not spikes. Even in the original Crystal Man stage, I did not like this. It seems like it just follows a random pattern. Well, of course, my weapons don't recharge per stage. And I can't go back down ladders either. Ah, what I dislike so strongly about this is that they can still hit you even when your invulnerability frames are up. Even the crystal droppers could never do that. This game does not have any safe states heavily. This is just a fan game. Alright, after five attempts I made past that one section. Worst part of the stage, this is why I tend to hold this off as being the last RM stage.
The other issue is that they seemingly pierce through your invulnerability frames. Well, it's been on my to playlist for about two years now, Buster. There are places where I can find these. And that's the strangest thing. It's only that one minor section out of this one entire iron stage, which I find to be very problematic. See, I don't mind this boss pattern. He could do it a little bit more telegraphing, but otherwise, his attacks are fairly dodgeable. And by defeating him, we get the Ice Shard. So like the Shotgun Ice. Storm Man it is. Alright, back up to two lies. Let's play around with the ice shard. Compared with the Heat Wave, I'll save that for weakness affiliations. I did it too high. And until I get to the Wild Castle levels, I won't be using World Master Weaknesses. And it appears that Pippies don't give up as easily here. Hopefully one of these can drop an extra life. Oh yeah, another section that I can break by using the Mega Jump.
Essentially, several enemies seem to act like Sniper Joes. Because he kept using that tornado dash attack, he was fairly straightforward. Even his base pattern is pretty simple to get a handle on. And by defeating him we get a thundercloud, which is essentially like the air shooter. Energy man it is. As for who made this game buster, According to a source I found online, this game was made by the user Atomic Fire. I can't find any contact information about them though. And last, an extra life in the wild. As well as the first D tank of the game. When I first played this game in my own time, enemies more frequently dropped extra lives. But of course, due to the LPR's curse, enemies are deciding to not drop extra lives. It seems that this game's drop rate is about the same as Mega Man 5's, or close to it. If you say so, Megman2407, this still feels like a fan game to me. I still hold the opinion that Pyroman stage is the best Roadmaster stage of the game because it actually has a unique gimmick and it utilizes it throughout the entirety of the stage and it has technically two new enemy types.
And yeah, I don't know how to dodge the energy flash. This game predates Mega Man Maker by several years. Perhaps even a decade. And by defeating him, we get the energy flash. So last but not least is Atomic Man. Really, the best part of this game are its graphics. And Pyro Man stage. Other than that though, I don't really recommend this. It's this game's screen clearing weapon. Also, fill-ups are instantaneous. They don't delay you, thankfully. At least most of the weapons feel at the very least decent. They don't suck is what I'm saying. Oh no, I forgot that this stage has the forest beams. Which to be honest, weren't that bad. Yeah, I've played Dr. Wise Final Attack on the channel. Along with Maho Warrior. And thus, Atomic Man has ran out of energy. By defeating him, we get the Atomic Laser, a faster-flying version of the Spike Shot. 